Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Corn Beaner. Uh, I want to talk to you guys today about a new program that I found out about to capture footage and even stream games if you do the streaming called Open Broadcaster Software. Uh, before I take credit for discovering this, I did not actually discover this. I follow one of my favorite StarCraft uh, shoutcasters from YouTube on Facebook uh, by the name of Husky. Uh, he said that he was having problems with X with XSplit, and a bunch of his followers suggested, "Hey, why don't you use OBS or Open Broadcaster software?" So I googled it, found out that it actually does exist and is not just a prank or a trap. And I came to the website. So right at the homepage, it lets you know what it what OBS actually is. Um, it's absolutely free, which is always a plus. And once you, if you want to download it, you can come to the download tab and the download page. Uh, the software does come in a 32-bit and 64-bit version. So if you have slightly older hardware, don't feel bad because it will work with it. And also if you're using like a Windows 7 32-bit or I believe even Windows XP, I'm not sure. I don't have XP anymore. It might work with that. I'm actually using the 64-bit version as I do have 64-bit components in my machine to actually take advantage of the extra memory and everything else that this can actually be used for. And once you get to the download page, there are two versions of this software to actually download. You have your stable .472 beta version of the program, and there's also a test build, a .473B test build 11. So this is most likely either the 11th or 12th version of the beta as it as it currently stands. I'm not, I guess, like a really techie geek to actually deal with some of the problems that may come in the beta, so I just don't want to deal with it. So I just went straight for the stable version, the .472 beta. Um, also, if you like to tweak stuff, they allow you access to the source code and the binary code. Again, I don't have the skills to actually deal with that stuff, so I just went straight to the download. Once you click the download, it takes about five seconds to actually download the program and it will come here. The program is about five megabytes, which is already done. And once you, and it also downloads as a executable file. So just click on it and you will be able to launch it. Once you launch it, it looks like this. And going through some of the settings uh, straight away, if you go to the settings, just what language, if you go to the encoding, um, there is a video encoding, the quality balance, and if you hover over it, it lets you know exactly what the quality balance actually means. So right now by default is at 8, and the settings go, this settings will attempt to target a certain quality to paint on your bitrate and buffer size. Setting this to a high volume with the low bitrate will sacrifice the quality of... of high motion scenes in favor of non-moving scenes causing inconsistent quality. I left it at default. The only thing that I did tweak was the max bit rate and the buffer size. I set both of them to 3500 um, just because they actually recommend that and that's what is suggested to you when you hover over it. Uh, I found that I'm not having any issues with it so that's why I left it at. The audio encoding I left it at default with the codec of ACC with the bit rate of 128. Uh, when it comes to the broadcasting setting, this is where I ran into my first issue. There are two different modes for the broadcaster setting. There is the live stream mode, which will record the footage that you are streaming to your hard drive if you want a backup copy, but you also need to have it attached to a Twitch TV or Justin TV or any other program that is actually supported by this program in order to keep recording. If it does not communicate with one of those servers, it will actually start recording about two seconds in and all you get is about two seconds of you going, ah, and go from there. So if you want to capture stuff from your computer, say a game that you're playing from Steam or something that you may have bought or even something along the lines of what I'm doing here which is like a little tutorial, make sure that the mode is on file output only. Um, set the path for where you want it captured. I have it on the install drive with another folder of OBS slash captures on my M drive. You can also set the hotkeys for your starting to stream, for your start stream and your end stream which is pretty sick and they do save and uh, I didn't make any changes but I always ask you if you do anything it will always ask you you know no uh, the video the base resolution is actually that of my monitor of 1920 by 1080 um, for me uh, you can also downscale the resolution 
and it'll tell you how much you can downscale it to and go from there. Uh, I'm not having any problems on 1920 by 1080. Uh, the FPS, which is the frames per second, I believe are defaulted to 60. I set it to 30, and I explained this when I did the FF split video. And the reason why I set it to 30 is because a lot of the games that I play that I want to record and put on my YouTube channel tend to have full motion video cutscenes or computer generated cutscenes. So the best of my knowledge, all of those intros, cinematics are always running and rendered at 30 frames a second max. The game itself might go 60 or above, especially on PC, but the cutscenes themselves never go above 30. And one of the problems that I've had when recording at 60 frames a second is that the game itself will be fine, but once I got to the cutscenes, I will have a slight audio video desyncing because it was recording at a lot faster rate than what is actually being shown on the screen. So in order to just kind of do away with that, I leave it at 30 to kind of to the lowest common denominator, which is the cutscenes. And it really doesn't affect the overall quality or even appearance of the video once it's finished, even if the game is running faster than 30 frames a second. So for me, if you're playing a game like that, I would say 30 frames a second is pretty much a must. If you're playing a fighting game or any other game that moves straight at 60 that doesn't have any slowdown, you know what, set it to 60, set it to whatever you want, but if you do have those type of story games, 30 frames would most likely be the sweet spot. Uh, going to the audio, um, you have the desktop audio device, basically is what is the output device for your audio. For me, it's going to be my headset, so I made sure that my headset was set by was set to the default device. Um, same thing with the microphone or any type of auxiliary audio. Uh, again, it's attached to my Logitech headset, so I made sure those were actually set to default on both. And it also has a bunch of other things that you can tweak out if you want to use push to talk, any type of delay. It's all right here for anybody who wants to just, you know, fix it to however they want it specified. Uh, the advanced stuff, again, uh, the general, this stuff by default is use multi thread optimization. Um, it's set to normal. You can set it to other speeds, I mean, sorry, other priorities. I left it at normal. And then the video for the X264 CPU preset, the encoding is uh, set to very fast by default. And if you hover over it, it says setting this volume higher reduces CPU usage by sacrificing certain aspects of quality. On the other hand, setting this volume lower quality Sorry, setting this value lower increases the quality at the cost of more CPU. It's recommended that you leave it at very fast. Um, they have an ultra fast, super fast, very fast, faster, fast, medium, slow. I'm going to leave it at very fast because that's what they recommend. Again, I'm just one for ease of use, not really into the whole tweaking and trying to set certain aspects for myself. But if you want to, they have a bunch of boxes right here that will let you do whatever it is that you want. And that's pretty much the settings. Uh, looking at the actual capture screen itself, um, there are two boxes down here below. One of them reads scenes, the other one reads sources. In order to get this to record anything from your desktop, you have to set these two boxes up. By default, these are going to be blank. So in order to set them up, first you got to start with scene. Go to the scene box, right click, and you will see a pop-up menu show up and it's move up, move down, all this other stuff. All you gotta do just for basic ease of use is add scene. Once you add scene, you can name it what you want. I just left the default scene and you will get this. And then when you go to sources, same rules apply. Right click, you will see this, it says add, and then you will have a bunch of options. Image, slideshow, global source, that was something that I messed up on and tweaked. This is not normally here. Text, video capture, game capture. I put it at software capture so anything that is actually shown on my screen will actually be captured and once you have those two set up you have a bunch of options here on the other side buttons if you want to see if it's actually working correctly there's a button here that's actually grayed out right now because i'm actually streaming or oh, actually capturing they just consider it streaming this says preview stream and it will show you what it's actually capturing so if you want to just you know mess with that before actually thinking oh it's ready you know it's set to go uh, check that out first uh, stop stream all that other stuff here the settings of course and the other thing that you will have to change when you're trying to capture is 
the edit scene. The edit scene is actually used for this screen here. As you can tell, you can see every bit of my desktop from corner to corner. You can see everything here. But when you start this off, it's actually very zoomed in at a specific point on your desktop. So if you edit scene, you will see that there is a red box. I don't know if you guys can see this on the actual um, video itself, but there's going to be a red outline around the screen as it currently is. So you, my suggestion would be is to move it around, grab one side, make it really, really small, and then just drag it to a corner. Once you drag it to the edge, it will snap in place. And once you have one of the corners snap, just go to an opposite corner, drag it, and have it you know, completely fill the screen. If you want to cut out, like say the bottom part of your desktop, because you don't want people looking at whatever little icons you might have in the bottom, feel free to do that as well. Move it around. Again, make it small to your liking. I would suggest snapping one of the corners. If you hold the control button while dragging the, oh man, while dragging, you won't actually snap. It will actually keep going. And you can go as far as you want, making it bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller. Um, again, if, if that's something you want to do, by all means, go ahead and actually do that. I believe that is the basic rundown of this program. I don't think I left anything out. If I did, feel free to ask questions down in the comments below. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this about FF Split, but I was using FF Split last week and then this week I'm using this program because I'm a finicky guy and I'm just looking for good software. But um, I'm going to compare both of them. The end size for the file size on open broadcaster software, even at 1920 by 1080 with the bitrate of 3500, is tiny. And I'm talking super tiny. Um, I believe a 15 minute video will be under 100 megabytes, which is insanely tiny. FF split for a video of the same size was about three times the actual size at the end. So 15 minutes on open broadcaster was 80 megabytes. Uh, 15 minutes on FF split was 240 roughly. Both of those are actually very dwarf-like compared to something that you would get from Fraps because uh, Fraps is about a gigabyte a minute. So both of them are very tiny, but Open Broadcaster is even tiny compa compared to FF Split. So that is one thing in favor of Open Broadcaster. Another thing that I liked about Open Broadcaster compared to FF Split is that I am able to record onto the same hard drive as the game that I'm actually playing. So in my my practice modes, I ran Mark of the Ninja, which is on my M drive, and with Open Broadcaster, I recorded to my M drive, and I did not notice any type of frame drops, any type of uh, audio desyncing issues, which for me is really, really good, and it is also a benefit to those users who may only have one hard drive on their machines. I have three hard drives on my machines, but you know, if I can keep everything just centralized to my work hard drive, which is my M drive, that's always a big benefit. With FS Split, I noticed that I got a bunch of frame droppage and even some audio video desyncing in some of the cutscenes if I recorded onto the same hard drive from which I was playing from. So in order to fully optimize FF Split, I had to um, set it to a lower overall resolution, which is one negative. And I had to actually record to a different hard drive from which I was playing and attempting to capture from. So in that spectrum, again, Open Broadcaster would get a plus one over FF Split. Um, the one problem that I did run with Open Broadcaster is when I installed it, it was running fine. I turned off my computer, came back, and for whatever reason, every time I would try to capture a game, I would either get a white screen or a black screen during the whole like time that I was recording the game. Once I returned to my desktop, it was fine and dandy, but anytime I would try to record you know, the actual game, I would get, you know, those blank sections. They would record sound. It just wouldn't record the video. I was messing with it for like two hours, getting super frustrated, getting super angry, and somehow, some way, it fixed itself. That is something that I didn't run into with FS Split at all. 
So that is something that you will have to keep a lookout for. Again, both programs, FF Split and Open Broadcaster, are in beta, so there are going to be issues like that. But the fact that it was able to fix itself is fine. But you will want to most likely um, test capture some stuff before you actually fully capture at the startup or whatever the the case may be with you with open broadcaster just because it will suck for you to want to start broadcasting stuff or capture stuff and all you're getting is white screens you don't want to spend 20 30 minutes on something and then have it just be for nothing because it's you know like a white screen um so on that scenario i am going to give ff split the advantage but only slightly because it seems to work whenever you want but again once this fixed itself um, it tend to stay fixed so but that's just something you have to keep in mind um, other than that I believe I covered everything uh, this is a good program for free you know the file sizes are tiny so you can just capture upload to YouTube uh, the quality is insanely good for a free program the fact that I can capture at 1920 by 1080 with a higher bit rate and I have no frame droppage is excellent to me and um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it off like that. If you have any questions, please feel free to always ask down below. I will answer those to the best of my abilities. And I hope this has been somewhat helpful. This has been Corn Beaner, and I will see you guys next time.